Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Per usual, please like and subscribe. Today, we're gonna to be going over the ACES workflow from Unreal Engine into DaVinci. This is specifically helpful because DaVinci is a free software and one of the best when it comes to color. So let's get into it. Okay, so here I am in my Unreal Engine project. This is the Jungle Cave tutorial that I actually have linked below in the description if you wanna check it out. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do to set up ACES is enable a few things via the plugins. So to do that, you wanna go over to edit, go down to plugins. First one is movie render queue. So type in movie render, and you're gonna see this right here, click it. You're gonna see a little restart button pop up right here. Don't click that just yet. Uh, the next one is gonna be OCIO, which is open color IO. You wanna click that on as well, and then go down and restart your engine. Okay, so now that we have the plugins added in, uh, the next thing we're gonna do is do control space to bring up our content browser. Uh, we can right click, go up to the search menu, and then at the very top, just type in open, and you're gonna see open color IO configuration. Click on that, and let's name this OCIO underscore ACES, and click enter, and then open it up. Now that's opened it up, we have our configuration file already added. This is something new that Unreal Engine has added to, uh, I think since 5.4. Basically, you'd have to go to GitHub before to download your own configuration file. Now it comes with it, which is a good thing. Um, the next one is a desired color spaces. Go over this and click plus twice. The first one is gonna be our sRGB. So go to, click down the arrow, go to utility and go to linear uh, rec 709 sRGB. Uh, after that, go to ACES and do ACES CG. And then go up to the top and click save. Close it out and now, uh, once you're ready to export, so I already have my export right here. So once you're ready, go over to your clapperboard, make sure it is on Movie Render Queue and open it up. I'm gonna go to Unsave Configure and here you're gonna have a few settings, but if you go up to this little plus sign where it says settings, click on that and add a few more. Um, just going over my general export settings, I'm gonna do anti-aliasing. I'm gonna do color output for the OCIO config. I'm gonna do game overrides, and then I'm gonna go do .exr. One quick note, OCIO configs are basically expanding the color spaces, which means if you want to export in JPEG, JPEG is 8-bit. Very simple way of saying this is 8-bit is a smaller amount of information. Since it's a smaller amount of information, you're really not going to get any value out of using ACES unless you use 16-bit. So I definitely suggest you do .exr if you don't want to do anything else I do here. If you do JPEG, just export normally. Don't do ACES. Um, so now that we have that set, you have the .exr, you have deferred rendering, you have anti-aliasing. I'm just going to do two and six, nothing crazy here, and then override anti-aliasing. Uh, the next one is the color output. One, you want to enable OCIO. Next one is the uh, configuration source. Go down to the drop menu and do your OCIO ACES you just created. The transform source is going to be the first one we made, which is a linear rec 709 sRGB. And the last one is going to be ACES CG. That's all looking good. Last one, I have game overrides in here. Game overrides is basically maxing out all the settings. Don't need to do much, just add it. And then the last bit here is for output. Just make sure you're outputting it where you want it to be outputted with the correct output resolution and file format is just really the name. So I'm going to pick my folder, which is ACES Jungle Cave, select, accept, and click render. Okay, so now that you have your render, the next thing we need to do is open up DaVinci. So I'm gonna go over here to an untitled project, click on that, and it's gonna open up a new one for me. The next thing you can do is if you wanna name it, you can name it real quick, which just means say project as, and then name it. In my case, I'm just gonna name this ACES uh, Tutorial or TUT and click save. After that, you can go over here to your left um, and find where you have your export saved. So for me, it's in library and and then now you'll see it here. Color looks horrible, do not worry. And luckily, when DaVinci reads it, although it's a bunch of separate images, it compiles it into one. So just grab your one and drag and drop it into your project. Okay, so now we need to set up a few things. 
So the first thing we're gonna do is go over to the bottom right at this little cog, click on that, and you're gonna see your project settings. Uh, another way of entering a project settings is actually going up to file and going down to project settings. Uh, Shift nine also is the hotkey. So once you're in here, the next thing you can do is go over to the color management tab and we need to change the color science of our project. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to the color science and change this to ACES CCT. Click on that. Uh, make sure ACES is set to ACES 1.3. And then from there, you need a out, uh, ACES input transform and output transform. Both of these are gonna be REC 709. So just click on it and uh, type in REC and then you'll see 709 and then REC again and you'll see 709. The next one that you wanna make sure is clicked is uh, apply ACES reference gamut uh, compress. Make sure that's clicked. And the last one here is use color space aware grading tools. You're gonna to be color grading in ACES, so you might as well have the tools aware of it. So click on that as well and go to save. So now that that setup is done, there's one more thing we need to do, which is click on our actual image or video, go over to ACES input transform, go down to color space conversion and just click on ACES CG, basically letting the software know that this is an ACES CG. So now that you've done the color space conversion, the next thing you can do is go over to this tab right here and bring in your .exr. And you're gonna see right away that it looks much better than when we first opened DaVinci. So this is how it's supposed to look. The next thing we can do is actually go over to this tab right here, which is the color tab. Since ACES is all about expanding the amount of colors that are available to us, it's always good to go over the color tab. I do wanna preface this, however, by saying I am by no means a really good colorist or even an average colorist. Um, I do suggest you go to YouTube and check out a bunch of different tutorials about how to color using DaVinci, since part of this is really just setting up ACES. However, since you are here, if you do wanna learn a little more, I have no problem teaching. So when we're going through this, this is our color tab. Everything we're gonna be using to kind of adjust the color is down here on this bottom um, of the part of the screen. The right will have different presets you can use or kind of effects. And then the left has a bunch of different LUTs. Your DaVinci will already come with some of them. Uh, and then you can also add some in to kind of adjust and change your color depending on what you're looking for. The nodes right here is really where you're gonna be hanging out in a lot of ways when it comes to adding and changing things. Nodes are affected by or on a chronological basis. So if you wanna add a node, if I do control S, that's how you add nodes. Um, then you can just delete them if you don't want them. And then let me add a node to kind of disable to see your changes. You can either do Alt Command D to disable everything you've done. If you just want to disable one, you can do Control D to just disable one to kind of see the look. The node base system is a lot of fun because you can kind of add and change things pretty quickly. If I make drastic changes, say I just go over to the offset and launch it all the way up and then go to the gain, launch it all the way down, and then hit control S and hit gamma, and that goes straight up. You're making large scale changes that I think in Premiere Pro would be kind of annoying to fix. But if I said, you know, I really like that the off offsets as crazy as it is, and I like how the gamma is as crazy as it is, I can just delete this middle one. And now very easy way to kind of adjust things fast. I know this is a drastic way of showing it. So Moving on from that, how I normally handle um, every single color, color grade that I do is I adjust a contrast and then from there I'll just color and then from there I'll do minor changes or add a LUT, stuff like that. So for the first one, I'll just do node label, change this to contrast. And then for the second one, I'll right click again, node label and change this to color. For a contrast, I normally use the curves. So this is the curves right here, if you click on this, and then the far left version is also the curves. I'm gonna click right here and here, just go down a bit and up a bit, which is our traditional S curve, very similar to what you would learn in like a photography class. Um, from here, I would normally adjust contrast and then highlights. I'm gonna bring the highlights down because I really like how the blue sky, if I bring the highlights too far, the blue sky goes away. So I'm gonna keep the highlights down and probably keep the shadow's a little high, and then we can kind of adjust from there. I do want this to feel like nice and bright, so there's no need to really add too much contrast. I think 32 is fine. And then again, if you just wanna check out your changes, uh, Command or Alt D, and those are our minor changes to the overall scene so far. Um, let me increase 
just play with this just a tad more to see kind of what we can get out of it. There we go, Alt D, and those are our changes. Just adding a little more liveliness to the scene. The next one, I'm gonna go over to color. And then for this, I normally like hanging out again in the curves tab because the curves tab has hue versus hue, which basically means I can change a hue to other hues. Um, that's how you get kind of crazy effects like this. Uh, it has hue versus saturation, same idea, but a hue will be more saturated than others. So say I really want the green to be saturated in this, I can click left and right of the green and kind of launch it up or down. It looks like green isn't registering too much. It looks like it's probably yellow. Yeah, it is yellow. So see how the green is getting much higher. And then again, since it's registering as yellow, if I'm thinking, okay, well, I don't want the green to be, or well, I want the green to be green, not yellow. You can go back to hue versus hue, kind of log that in and then adjust accordingly to kind of make it feel just a little more green and vibrant. So nice and easy way of how to kind of affect it very simply. And then I'm gonna go back over here and probably bring down the amount of saturation I just added to our scene, like so. And then the other thing I'm gonna do actually is go over to saturation itself on the here and just probably throw it up to 75. Looks very saturated, but I can now go over to the different hues and adjust them accordingly to kind of even out our scene. Another easy way of kind of getting saturation throughout where you want it without going too overboard. I'm gonna bring down the green as well since we've already kind of up that number a good amount. Let's go maybe right here. And then now our scene in my opinion is for the most part done. Um, without diving too much into other stuff, I, you can now add any effects you want for for animation or rather CG or fake worlds, it's always nice to add in a little damage or effects that kind of bring down the quality and clarity since it will look more realistic because of it. A perfect example is like if you ever watch a movie like District 9, the animation in that looks very clean and beautiful and, and fits the world because they kind of ruined it and roughed it around the corners. So a lot of people try and do this. They can either add film grain, film damage, uh, halation, all different ways of kind of ruining your scene a little. In my case, if you want, you can add some film grain or halation. Some of that stuff actually might be part of the paid version of DaVinci. So check it out if you have it, always play with it, but it's always good to remember that some damage works. And then the last one is usually just for final touches. I'll admit, I don't really follow a perfect kind of labeling system for this one. If, if say I, the green's too bright, I might adjust that small, like just slightly, or I might adjust the highlights just slightly, kind of doing like last minute fine tunings to the overall scene to make it look the way I want it to look. But overall, that is how I usually go about color grading. Once your scene is at a place where you really like it, you can go over here to this little rocket ship tab. This is where we're gonna render our scene. You can go over here to the file name, change it to uh, ACES export. That works for me. Location, choose whichever location you want. Just to keep things quick, I'll just do the downloads folder. And then usually, and by usually I mean 99% of the time, DaVinci will have it set up appropriately based on your project settings. So for me, H.264, perfect, high quality, perfect, uh, preset, medium. You can change this to very fast or very slow. That's usually the speed of the actual render. Medium's fine, usually does the right thing. Two pass, you can enable if you want um, the highest export you can get. But again, as someone who's worked in production a very long time, for the most part, unless you're doing like high-end commercials, I wouldn't worry too much about like, changing the render, doing a two pass. Once this is all done, you can go over to add to render queue. And then once you're add rendered queue, you can go over to render all and your scene will start rendering based on your in and out points. So I hope you liked the tutorial. Again, please like and subscribe. It helps me out a ton. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.